go get him again. What's going on, Fragrance family? Welcome to the Rogue Zoe channel. I'm your host, Mark, and welcome to Sampling Samples Sunday, where I go through my big bag of samples, pick one, and go through it. And today's sample is from the Confidential line from the brand of Carolina Herrera. This one called Platinum Leather. Now, if you have no experience with this line, it's a line from Herrera that is their higher echelon line. They are extremely hard to find, even really hard to actually try to sample this line. So these videos, I think, will help some to kind of weed out which ones you should be testing or sampling if you have to pay to sample. Um, so this is where I like these type of videos. So I own several of the brand, but you know, check out my channel and see that you're gonna find some more reviews on these within the years, more to come. I own, you know, I think I only have one or two videos on this brand or this higher echelon confidential line, but I will be talking more about them. So today we are going to see how platinum leather does. And uh, spoiler alert, this is the worst, <laughs> the worst rating a sample gets on my channel this year in 2023 which means, you know, price does not mean best of. Keep that in mind. Let's go under the hood. Let's take a look at some stats on this. This one release date was back in 2018. Concentration de Parfum, Nose, Amandine, Clec, Marie. Um, resume, pretty impressive. Amber Malaki from Chopard, Trench from YSL, Aura by Muglier. Um, that new goddess one from Burberry is under her name, among others. So very good resume. So now let's take a look at the big notes to my nose in this fragrance. In this fragrance review, the sampling samples may go under 10, 10 minutes. And uh, you may say that's running long, but that's a short video for me. Reason why, very simplistic set. Um, there's not much to it. There's not much transition. So let's get into it. The big note in this one, the major player, the big player, you'd think leather. You're wrong, jasmine. See, jasmine-based scent. Musk backs it up and vanilla. So as you can tell, like jasmine can have personality, but here it doesn't have much of it. Um, so it, it it's a very, I don't wanna say this politely, but a very boring scent. It really doesn't have much to it. And I wouldn't be surprised, I should've went on YouTube just to see if there's any reviews on this. I'd probably bet some money that if there is not much um, because this is a pricey little devil first of all and if you're going against all the other Herreras this has no chance to be purchased at least in my personal opinion let's get to sniffing and I'll let you know what I smell platinum leather is my center of the day but I am going to drain my little sample now and left just enough to remind me of the introduction oh she's on fumes come on just gotta be more out of this there you go there you go good job all right, enough of that. So, platinum leather and who? Platinum leather is a huge letdown for a leather lover like me. And honestly, the opening, the dry down doesn't get any better, unfortunately. So I, I'm gonna let the cat out of the bag, I already did. This is a jasmine based set. That has nothing to do with leather. It has a little, okay, I'm, I'm exaggerating. It has a little bit to do with leather. We're gonna get into that, but it's very minute. I don't mind jasmine, but when you put leather in the name, there's gotta be leather. And my expectations from this brand and what I've purchased and blind bought and the winners that I've been getting, I'm really disappointed in this one. So let's get into the set. The jasmine is the first note that your nose is going to meet. The jasmine here is 3D. It's good. I've smelt better, but it's still good. It shows a fruity apricot banana-like nuance, which are fairly mild, but if you dig deep enough, you're gonna try to get some color out of this, this fragrance, and that's where you get here um, a little bit of that. Uh, it's hard to find, but especially in the opening, you are going to get some you know, some interesting parts, but they're very hard to find. Now, platinum leather smells very white and gray to me. It does not have much personality. And throughout the fragrance, like it really has, like it has a mild little suede-like leather, very mild, and we're gonna get into that. But really all, all it is is white grayness. Now the jasmine also gives off the usual sweetness that it does. Um, and it's gonna give off also some musky nuances here in this fragrance. This is your opening. 
very simple, straightforward, jasmine-based scent. It's an airy floral with some musks in the back end. That's it. That's your, that's your opening. And you can <laughs> barely sense that there's a suede-like thing in the back end of this. Now in the mid, not much changes. So what you get, like if you go to a store and you smell it, and you spray this on your hand and, and, and you get your initial, you're going to be like, okay, maybe I'll wait for the dry down to get better. No. In the mid to the deep dry down, nothing much changes as the other notes just mildly add to the jasmine. You get some vanillic sweetness. So again, more sweetness. I'm um, the vanilla, not a great vanilla here. And it adds, to, of course, to the sweetness that the jasmine already has given. It starts getting a little muskier in the back end too. Um, so again, not much to report here. Now let's tackle the elephant in the room, the leather. The leather, I tried and I really tried to find something with oomph here. Not, the only thing I can say, there's really, really mild suede going throughout the fragrance. In um, the opening, you get really, like you have to really look for it. In the dry down, it comes a little pronounced, but not enough. It, it's so faint that I even hate mentioning it in this fragrance review. Uh, funny enough, I was looking at the note breakdown during this testing and I noticed they had Cipriol in the note breakdown. And knowing this note is a big bull note and very dark, not here, nothing, not now. It was lost during the bottling process. I don't know where that even came from. Um, leather, not there's nothing dark, there's nothing bold here, there's nothing leathery, unfortunately. So. Talking about, let's talk about little minute details, including, you know, the leather is minute. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of woods in the back end. There's a little bit of smoke. There's a little bit of dustiness. But again, it's so minute that it's even hard for me to uh, mention this in this fragrance review because it is a jasmine forward fragrance. It has some vanillic tendencies and it has some musks. So that's what you're gonna come to expect. These little things that I'm talking about, dustiness and, and leather or suede and, and, and woods, they are so minor in this release. So overall, this scent disappoints, period. Where's my leather note? Don't tell me that that extremely minor suede note was it. It was. That's it, Herrera, you screwed up. You aren't fooling anyone. Discontinue this one, repackage it uh, to Platinum Jasmine if you want, and you may get a few other noses on it. Uh, on a side note, the Jasmine is okay in this release, um, not Herrera confidential pricing and hard to find. Um, I'm not going to put the effort and the money forward for this type of fragrance, unfortunately, versus the rest of the line. There's some stunners in this line, like multiple stunners. So it's kind of hard to go, okay, well, I got three, four, five confidential bottles. Am I going to get this? This is going to be at the end of the road. I'm going to get this. That's how I felt about this release. Waste of money, honestly. So let's get into Seasons Day Night versatility performance. Anybody that's interested in that, let's get into it. Seasons, um, it's a Jasmine Ford fragrance. So spring, uh, start of fall, um, you know, summer nights, things like that. Day or night, I feel like this is more of a daily wear scent, like a signature scent for somebody that really does like Jasmine. Uh, musky scents, that's about it. Uh, versatility, fairly high. There's nothing to it. Um, so you can basically wear it almost uh, dress it up dress it down most seasons you can pull this one off performance um, Longevity was six to eight hours. So it did stay on my skin for a good amount. It's not beast it, it never really hit nine or ten um, So six to eight kind of weak a little bit it has below average projection So this thing does not push at all off my skin. Um, unfortunately, it really didn't do well as far as performance goes so my final thoughts, easy here. This isn't a leather. You, you, you got to change the name. For the price they asked for, this simplistic jasmine fragrance isn't it. It really isn't. I've smelled many of this line and this is the first time they flopped to my nose. And hey, everybody has a bad day. Every brand has a bad day. Doesn't matter on the price. Um, it as good as the line is you're gonna get some flops. They flopped here and they flopped hard. Um, this is really not good. And I don't mean it stinks, it's just not good for the price you're asking for and the mislabeling. I can see why now in 2023, they have released a new leather for this line called Stallion Leather. That, that name, 
And I do have a sample of it somewhere, so it is going to be in my sampling samples. I think I'm gonna put it in my subscriber's choice there. Um, so keep it tuned in. If you're, you're not subscribed, please subscribe, um, which is probably what this should have been, a darker leather. Now, if I had to give it a score currently, whew, <laughs> and like I said, this is gonna be the worst score on the channel this year. This is the worst release as far as sampling samples. That's, you know, sampling samples, I give scores, test drives, I don't. Um, unboxings, I don't. So those don't count. So sampling samples are the only ones that do get scores on my channel now and full-fledged reviews. But uh, this one is gonna be a three bottles out of 10. I don't even know if I went under five ever in this year at all. I have in the past, but not, not this year. Three out of 10. You only get three because the Jasmine is actually pretty good. It's not trash, but it's not what I asked for. And for that price, I don't think I'd pay straight up for a jasmine scent like this that doesn't have much backbone. Musk and vanilla, you can find that in the designer realm anywhere. I mean, it's not anything that is worthy of that price tag, um, especially since there's more interesting jasmine scents on the market, designer niche, you name it. Anything under this price point, you could probably find two, three dozen uh, jasmine-based scents that are better than this one. So, I let it down. And it is what it is. So. Now that you heard my take, I'd love to see yours in the comments below. I know this is a hard line to sample, to test, to, to, to purchase. Um, so we're not gonna see too many comments in regards to this uh, fragrance, but if you have sniffed it, I'd love to see your comment below, good, bad, and the ugly. If you disagree with me and you say this is a great scent, awesome, we're all different, of course. And as always, a greater pour fragrance will make a last impression. Choose your leather-based fragrance. Hey. Check the tag. <laughs> the, tag, the tag doesn't match the scent, unfortunately, in this, this area. So even if the tag says it, you still have to sniff it. So a greater pour fragrance will make a lasting impression. Choose your scent wisely. Thanks for watching YouTube. Have a good one.